Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm very happy to be a part of the TED team to give you a talk on this nanonutrients. There are a lot of hype going on this invention, innovation, and uh, as it is not a rocket science. Anybody can do it, and all of, any of you can do it. All you have to do is apply your mind, have patience, and then you should uh, be ready to fail. At every time you fail, you should not think that. Oh, the world is gone, I'm going back. No, you have to apply your mind more and more. That's all. So, I'll just take you across. Since I'm an outsider, I'm not a scientist. I'm just a commoner. I'm observing from the outside what I can do, the whole, the wholesome picture. Then I'm able to come out with the solution. Now, this nanonutrients. Have you ever thought how the fishes in the ocean get their food? There is a a uh, food chain that is happening. You know in the land, the uh, crops grow, the grasses grow, the herbivores eat the grass, then the carnivores eat, the, there is a food chain going. You, you can easily uh, uh, associate with that. But in the waters, how does the fish get their food? There is a food chain. I just, I was very curious on that. Then if uh, in any of your, uh, uh, I will just give you a small amazing story, how the entire thing went. Have you ever gone, uh, I mean you must be very, uh, uh, you must have gone near the Kuwam river where any polluted river water body and you will be holding your nose and then saying, oh it is stinking, I don't know what, can't they do anything about it. Yes we can, we can solve the entire Kuwam problem, we can solve the smell, we can stop the smell from happening, we can prevent uh, the breeding of mosquitoes in all these waters, we can uh, we can absorb global carbon dioxide. We can, we can give the, uh, uh, nutrients for the land crop so that they do very well. You can get very high, higher yields. You can stop the mass fish kill. You can, there are innumerable opportunities. Uh, this thing we can solve the problems. But it is not that I have made something very great. It's just a simple step which has uh, resulted to uh, benefit in a large way. Now, uh, about 15 years back, I was I wanted to develop the marine food chain, how the animals get the uh, fishes get their food. I wanted to develop that. I was talking to a number of scientists. They said, "You are mad. You can't do it. Only God has done it. Only He can do it. Or there is a nature cycle. Nobody knows about it." Then I thought, "No, it cannot be like that. If you have so much of uh, technology, so much of knowledge, there must be some method by which I can cre create the." Uh, marine food chain. In fact, a lot of th uh, people thought I was really mad. And uh, they said, no, no, you find out where your next food will come. You go and get some job, that is better. Uh, but I said, no. I, I had a passion for uh, developing the food chain in the water. So, subsequently what happened? Since I was having this passion, I, uh, I read up a lot of books. A lot of books and found, found out how the marine food chain how the nature does the job. First we have to first identify how nature, nature has the best and fastest and most cleanest processes in anywhere. There is no waste in the nature. Everything is done in a very clean way uh, and uh, it is all recycled. So how, how does nature do this job? We have to know how the nature does the job. See you will know that whenever it rains heavily on the land, the fisheries in the waters are very high. So for example Bangladesh or Calcutta or any of these coastal places where the rainfall in the land is heavy, you find the fisheries are large. There is a relationship between the nutrients from the land to the ocean, to the sea. Similarly, wherever the cold currents come from the uh, uh, polar regions and they do up, come upwelling, in those regions also the uh, fisheries are very, very large. So there is a nutrient that is coming from the land to the ocean. So what is that nutrient? So whether I can reproduce that uh, nutrient in any form. So this was my um, crux of the main problem. Then uh, subsequently what happened? Uh, uh, this algae um, that any plants, the plants that are growing the land, they pick up the nutrients from the soil. But if a plant has to grow in the water, the uh, plants growing in water are called algae. 
So if they have to grow in the water, they need all the nutrients that every plant needs in the, in the place where they are residing. That is, they are all actually micro plants. You can see only under the microscope. So you, they will have to get all the nutrients in the, in the place where they are residing. Then I thought that unless I deliver the nutrients to that place, it will not be possible for the, for the plants to grow. Then a uh, lot of scientists were thinking similar way. They wanted to absorb global carbon dioxide. They said if you uh, add nutrients to the ocean, probably we can make some algae grow and then absorb the global carbon dioxide and uh, sink the carbon. So with, with that view, they, they, they thought let us add some nutrients to the water. Subsequently what happened? There was, this, uh, they thought that there was a, so oceans were deficient in iron, iron. So they said if, if you add iron to the water, probably they can make the algae bloom. You will be surprised to note that most of the oceans are devoid of any productivity at all. They are just dead seas. There is no uh, life in any of the seas, especially South Pacific Sea and all that. Now they, they conducted, a, there was a great oceanographer by name John Martin. He said that, uh, give me a tanker of ice, uh, give a tanker of uh, iron, I will take you back to the ice age. So he, he said if you add iron to the water, probably uh, the algae will bloom and he can, uh, you can absorb the global carbon dioxide. And once that uh, the, the extra greening, uh, uh, warming effect of the carbon dioxide is removed, the earth will can go back to the ice age. He was telling like that. So in order to prove or disprove that theory, they did this SOFEX experiment. SOFEX you must have heard uh, where they, they went in ship and they dosed the ocean with uh, iron salts. But ultimately, nothing came out of it. They all had a nice vacation on the ocean. So they spent millions of dollars, but nothing came out of it. Essentially, the uh, phytoplankton, phytoplankton means algae that is growing in the ocean is the basis of all food chain. Once you are able to, there are several species of phytoplankton. For example, there are some, some are green algae. You must be very aware of this green algae. You all the lakes, wherever you say algae means, you think it is a green algae, that's one thing. But all these green algae have got cellulose cell walls. They cannot be digested by marine uh, animals. So those things cannot support the food chain. Then uh, there are other species, basically if I say, they are called diatoms. Generally they are called diatoms. These diatoms produce more than 50% of the world's marine food. Since they are... The, since the diatoms produce uh, more than 50% of the world's food, you would find that, uh, I thought uh, probably I should be targeting to grow the diatoms. So uh, when I, how to grow the diatoms? These diatoms have got silica cell walls. So if they have got silica cell walls, then probably they need a silica as a nutrient and they will need all the nutrients that any plant requires in the place where they are residing. Now these are the, some of the shots that uh, polluted lakes, this is in Bangalore. And this is a blue-green algae. Generally, you see in any polluted water body, you will find blue-green algae. They are not uh, actually uh, plant. They are all actually uh, bacteria, cyanobacteria they are called. But they do photosynthesis, so they are called blue-green algae. These blue-green algae actually are nuisance. They will produce toxins in the water body, and they, uh, they don't support any food or anything. So in all polluted waters, you may be seeing this. It's a eutrophied lake where there is no oxygen in the water. Whenever the such algae crash, you know, you'll find mass fish kill. This is one of the, that's happening in the, any of the lakes. Suddenly there will be a mass fish kill and people will be blaming pollution and other things. Actually the problem is the dissolved oxygen in the water comes down significantly. That's where the problem comes. Then you have yellowing of green leaves in banana. Now see, in any plant, plant needs all micronutrients in large, in, in very, very uh, tiny fragment but distributed over large areas. But what happens, in most of the uh, agriculture belt you will see a lot of just yellowing of this. Once you have yellowing in this, there is no, uh, the productivity of the land becomes very, very poor. If you are to get five tons in one uh, acre, probably you may get land up with just one ton of material. So it is a, a big loss and nobody knows how to solve the problem. You have uh, direct nutrients and you have chelated nutrients, but all those things don't help. So what we thought was, uh, to grow the diatom algae. Diatom algae needs silica. Then what happened? 
uh, we were uh, reading a number of things. One, one particular patent, there were a lot of work done on silica and silicon compounds in the 1950s. After that, they have closed the chapter, there is no use for that. Particularly, these silicon compounds were used for uh, anti slip compounds in the floor. So, I thought one of such compounds was, I took it, it was in a nano form and it was uh, stable in seawater. Once it is stable in seawater, I thought I can load my nutrients on that and then uh, make the thing bloom. Um, I tried, did a lot of uh, such uh, techniques. Most of the work I did in New Napalm here in Chennai, not Chennai. And uh, suddenly, one fine day, when I took the compound and did, uh, initially it did not come out. Then I had one reject compound. Then I said, why not try this reject compound? Suddenly, I found that that, <laughs> that compound was working very well. That is, as you are mixing in the in new Napalm, there is a, the sea centers the land. And there, there is nobody to disturb you or do anything. I took the water and we are mixing the compound, the bloom. The bloom, what bloom means, the color of the, uh, the items are golden brown in color. They suddenly come out. Once they bloom, within five minutes, the bloom came. And the whole area became golden brown in color. So I found that bloom was there. I took a microscope. I saw it under there. I found the beautiful species of the algae growing. My, the, my first objective was uh, achieved. The moment I am able to grow an, uh, the diatom bloom, uh, you will find th this is the diatom bloom. You can see under the microscope, under the microscope. The, the first object is over. This diatom bloom, uh, as the diatom blooms, you will find the zooplankton coming. There are small, uh, uh, this thing, they are filter feeders. They will, they will come to eat the, zoo, uh, the diatoms. And the zooplankton will become uh, food for the fishes. So the, the small fish is eaten by big fish. Thus, I am able to establish the marine food chain in the water. Once that is done, uh, I found that uh, I thought of initially attacking only uh, aquaculture. But suddenly, I found that, uh, that uh, the blooming of the diatoms produces plenty of oxygen. And that oxygen is uh, produced under the water in, in the, at the micro plant level. Very, very fine, fine, fine uh, specks of oxygen are produced under the water. Then I thought, why not? Uh, why not? Uh, uh, I thought, why not uh, use the, um, the bubbling of the oxygen, that oxygen that is coming, why not use for environmental remediation? I don't know if you are aware of this, how the, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the sewage uh, treatment plants work. They essentially, what happens? They use oxygen. Uh, essentially, they use uh, oxygen. They, you have got something called aerators. The aerators send in oxygen into the uh, water. You have an activated sludge. And the oxygen helps aerobic bacteria break down the uh, uh, sewage at that point, uh, break down into base constituents. And that is removed and filtered and then used. Now, essentially, the oxygen is required for the treatment. And I thought, if I'm getting so much of oxygen from the um, um, uh, from the water itself, from the blooming of the diatoms. Why not use it for environment remediation? Maybe I tried in all uh, sewage polluted lakes. We are able to solve the problem plenty. You can just see the oxygen bubbling. In fact, I have video that is loaded. You have uh, in the internet, you can see the diatom story. The diatom story is there where the entire story of our entire product is mentioned. We can find the bubbling of the oxygen. Once the oxygen bubbles, this oxygen helps aerobic bacteria break down the organics in the water. So we can clean up the water. And once that, the video is coming, you can see the oxygen coming out from the system. Once the oxygen comes and the aerobic bacteria in that place breaks down the organism, entire all this, you know, this uh, diatoms, uh, uh, um, uh, whatever uh, um, uh, organic residues are there, they are all eaten up by the zooplankton. The zooplankton in turn are eaten by the fishes. Ultimately, what will happen is the entire organic biomass that you have, the sewage or whatever organic biomass, entire thing becomes a fish biomass. You can just convert it into food. The, uh, and the water will be clean. And uh, in uh, environment treatment also, if you are not treating the water like in Kuam, you find that the, it is stinking. That is because of anaerobic uh, bacteria. Anaerobic bacteria, where the absence of oxygen, you have anaerobic bacteria. The moment oxygen comes, you will find it is aerobic bacteria. Once the aerobic bacteria comes, the smell will disappear. The whole place, you can remove the smell. And immediately within a few days, the entire water can be treated. It will be full of fishes. And that fish can be consumed because they will be, they were gone through the natural uh, processes. 
and the same water can be used for all other purposes other than probably drinking. Everything else it can be applied. So what we have done is, we have uh, we uh, 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 we have used this uh, technology. We, with this technology, we can treat any number of polluted water bodies anywhere in the world, whether it is Kuwam or whether it is Ganga, Yamuna, or whether it is uh, the Mississippi River or any ocean place. We can populate the entire uh, Atlantic with the salmon. We, anything can be done. Then what we did, we have used this same thing for spraying onto banana. Uh, uh, a similar uh, uh, a little variation of the product we have used for as a micronutrient for the um, for the uh, for the land crop. We had tried on rice, we have tried on potato, ginger, and all that. We found the fantastic, uh, spectacular results we have got. You can just see the banana what we here see on the left and what you are seeing on the right. This is after two 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 types of uh, sprayed. Their uh, leaves are just standing fully, and the uh, they are now they are flowering has started and he is getting a much bigger bunch of that. We, in fact, we can multiply the agricultural productivity in any place. It is just possible. So um, uh, this, is, uh, this is the uh, crux of our technology. We can uh, treat uh, any polluted water body anywhere in the world. And I hope uh, all the people will realize that very, very, uh, the, the technology is simple, and we can treat millions of liters and large water bodies. And in fact, it can be used for aquariums, can be used for uh, so, so many applications are there. As we progress, we are finding new, new, <laughs> more and more new applications. So uh, I hope you, uh, it will be. Uh, uh, if you have any doubts, you can just go into the internet. We have a website there. Will be you can see the www.nualgi.com. That's new, and you will find the entire details on that. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, sir. I want all of you to give one more round of applause, not for the talk, but really for the idea. I mean, just the idea of cleaning this entire town. Okay, so uh, do all of you feel like you're in some...